Hey, I'm Belle from the Williams Sonoma's House Kitchen and I am so excited because I am making my favorite cookies literally ever and I don't say that lightly. If you've ever wanted to bite into a cookie and a brownie at the same time, this is the recipe for you. Let's get to it. I'm starting with my classic and perfect cookie dough that's already a really popular existing recipe, but I just made a few key changes to make this brownie cookie vision come to life. I'm just gonna start out by weighing 180 grams of flour. I'm using bread flour in this recipe. The higher protein content in bread flour gives these cookies a really, really nice chew. A lot of the time when you are weighing the flour with a measuring cup, you're packing in way more flour than you even think. So using a kitchen scale when you're baking is completely gonna up your baking game. So I have 180 grams of flour here. I'm just gonna add to this a teaspoon each of baking powder, baking soda, and kosher salt. Give this a quick little whisk. Next, in the bowl of my stand mixer fitted with a paddle attachment, I'm gonna add one stick eight tablespoons of unsalted room temperature butter. Just give this a nice stir on medium speed for about one to two minutes until it's nice and creamy. Perfect, now I'm gonna add my sugars. I have some brown sugar that has that molasses in it for that iconic chocolate chip chew. And then some granulated sugar as well. Give this another stir. Just gonna cream this on medium speed until it gets nice and light and fluffy. About three minutes. You don't wanna skimp out on this step because it will give the cookie a lot of body. And add one room temperature egg. If you add a cold egg straight from the fridge, it's gonna kinda of clump the butter as it chills. And now for my favorite ingredient, maybe ever, Nielsen Massey vanilla bean paste. I'm obsessed with this. We use so much of this in the test kitchen. They just have to keep sending and sending and sending us all these jars. It just gives you a really nice concentrated vanilla bean taste and you get to see those little vanilla bean specks. I'm gonna start the mixer on slow just until I see that flour is pretty incorporated. And then just about now, I'm gonna increase the speed just to really get that flour incorporated into the dough. Again, this bread flour has a higher gluten content because of the extra protein, it's gonna get really, really tough. So make sure right when you see the flour has disappeared to turn off your mixer. Now I'm gonna split the dough into two different portions to make the chocolatey dough and the vanilla dough that we're eventually gonna swirl together. And because I'm a freak, I'm gonna weigh this first so I know exactly what half of this dough is. I'm gonna take out enough batter so that is at 267. For the chocolate dough, I'm adding some Dutch processed cocoa powder. You wanna make sure that you're using Dutch process because it has a really, really rich color and flavor, which is gonna make the dough really, really chocolatey and delicious. I'm just gonna give this a stir. Then for my vanilla dough, I'm just gonna add another tablespoon and a half of the bread flour. I'm gonna add three ounces of chocolate chips. Uh-oh, man down. And give this a quick stir. So now I have my vanilla cookie dough and my chocolate cookie dough. And now for the fun part. To add a piece of parchment to the kitchen scale just so I don't make it a total mess. Make sure it's set to zero. And I'm working in grams again. Now I'm just gonna take my cookie scoop and make 21 ounce portions. The perfectionist in me was like, 20 won't do, 21 is it. <laughs> and this is gonna take a little time, so just ease into it. It's very therapeutic. And with slightly damp hands, I'm just gonna give this a quick roll. Then continue with the rest of my vanilla dough and then switch over to the chocolate. Now that I have all my cookie dough balls all rolled out and ready to go, this is where we get to do the marbling. So the method I figured that works the best to get the most imperfect, perfect marbling is this. You take one of each, make a little snowman. Then just between the palm of my hands, I'm just gonna roll the ball until it's nice and marbled. You'll see it's already kind of starting to come together. Then the trick here, is to just take the ball and just pull it apart, flip directions, and roll again. You can do that a few different times until you kind of get the marbling you want, making sure you don't overdo it. You still want distinct swirls in there so you can see you know, the chocolate and vanilla. And place that face side up on your line sheet tray. When I'm baking cookies, I always like to arrange them a little offset on the sheet tray so you don't risk them kind of baking into each other. You wanna make sure you give each cookie its own space to just do its thing. I'm gonna pop these in the oven for about five minutes at 350 degrees. So my cookies have been in the oven for five minutes and I'm going to give them a gentle but intentional 
quick bang on the counter. This is gonna help release some of the air that's trapped in those cookies so you get a softer, chewier, flatter cookie rather than a domed, cakey one. And back to the oven for about five minutes. These are so pretty. Just makes my heart so happy. I'm just gonna let these cool on the sheet pan for about five minutes, then transfer them to a cooling rack before you wanna dive in and dunk them into some milk. I cannot wait for you guys to make these and then make them again and again and again and again. They're gonna be your new favorite. Don't forget to take pictures, share, and tag us to get this amazing, iconic cookie recipe. Head to williamsonemma.com.